Hi, this is Mushtaba al Hello, and thank you and welcome back to a new lecture in the Gothic novel course. And uh, today we have another interesting topic to talk about, which is the Gothic bodies. Uh, in Gothic fiction, in Gothic movies, we can find different type of characters, of bodies, which are very recurrent in, in, in this type of movies and genre. Uh, which are the double, specters, monsters, zombies, vampires, and abjection. And uh, each one of them has its own characteristics, has its own features and theories behind it. And we are going to talk about each one of them in some detail uh, in this lecture and uh, by providing certain examples from different movies so I hope you will enjoy this lecture let's move on to number one the double the double is the figure of the double is recurrent within gothic fiction and it takes a variety of forms it represents the protagonist's conflicted unstable identity it also represents an ill omen or a har harbinger of death so, uh, the double represents the unstable identity of someone. It also represents the, an ill omen, a harbinger of death. Uh, according to Freud, he believes that this double represents uh, the early childhood experience of fear, of, of complex. Those traumas and complexes which are buried da deep down in the unconscious, in the mind. Uh, that's why sometimes they appear as a double. They appear as a double who always threatens us, threaten our existence, our identity. Uh, that's why, for example, when we see ourselves in the mirror, we will find uh, a double of us uh, gazing deeply into our image in the mirror, uh, gazing deeply into our picture in the mirror. Into, into our image, it will, you, you will have some stingy sense of fear. You will sense that type of fear which you do not feel really easy. Maybe uh, we can make a challenge here uh, that tonight you just just move on alone uh, in the room, just gaze into your image in the mirror. After one minute, give me the conclusions. What? you will feel or what you will see in the in the mirror uh, because our unconscious our traumas will ignite they will begin to imagine something that doesn't really exist uh, one of the best manifestations of the double of the theory of the of the theory and concept of the double is found in a movie called the mirrors it's an amazing, it's a perfect uh, manifestation of this concept and it shows you how that image in the mirror threatens our existence and threatens our identity, our social identity and even our ex our very existence in life. And uh, I brought another example from a movie which has an amazing twist at the end called Us. So let's watch how they deal with this concept of the double, this concept which comes into the stable, warm uh, house of this family and how they react to this appearance of the double.
So as we have watched this scene, this uh, very tense scene that uh, the double of each character appears in the scene uh, and how they are traumatized, how they are horrified, how they are afraid of this double, of these people, of these characters who are the double of the same family. They correspond, each one of them correspond to the member of the family. So, uh, here we see that the identity of the family is disturbed, uh, is threatened, they are traumatized, they are horrified. So, uh, this, is, this is the way a double uh, functions in uh, a gothic movie or a gothic novel or fiction. Let's move into another concept in gothic genre, which is the specters. One of the key elements of gothic fiction is the presence of specters. It is necessary to form terror or horror. The specter is a gothic body that blurs the boundaries between life and death, and between matter and spirit. It is uncanny because it is always out of space in the familiar context of domestic family life. It appears to redress a past injustice or to terrorize an individual. So, specters or ghosts are those uh, supernatural elements or bodies which uh, get out of the limits or the boundaries uh, of, of, the, of death and comes into life. They come into life to threaten our existence, to threaten our identity. They do not respect those boundaries, those uh, uh, the boundaries between life and death and they are emancipated they ha they are free from any jail from any limit or law or rule in life they do not have that super, uh, super ego that we are bound to so they are free from any imposition they are free from any uh, law or social norm or tradition and they normally they appear in a very familiar context they appear in houses they appear among a room, among a family. We find them in familiar context. That's why it, it becomes more hor uh, horrible or more you know, fearful. Because they should not be in that place. Uh, finding something strange, unfamiliar in a, web, in a familiar place gives you more fear and more uh, trauma. They traumatize you, this, this contradiction. Uh, that's why we have the concept of the un uncanny uh, and the appearance of the uncanny which we will discuss in the coming lecture and uh, they normally appear th these specters they normally appear because of a past injustice or just to terrorize an individual they do not they might not have any purpose by their appearance but they just appear to terrorize an individual they just to uh, to, to give unstability to one's identity. Uh, one of the best manifestations of the specters or ghosts is uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet when uh, Hamlet, the father, King Hamlet, appears and insists on his son to take revenge from Claudius. And that's one of the best examples of specters who come back into life to just take revenge of an injustice, of a murder which has been committed to him 
in his life. He insists his son to take revenge from his uncle. That's why specters appear just to take revenge or to redress a past injustice. Another example. So here the ghost, the specter, tries to remind the character of some injustice done in the past. And she is warning, that ghost is warning the character, the girl, from a danger, from a threat which is coming. She said, he is coming. So that threat, that um, danger is coming. So uh, this is the general role of specters and ghosts in gothic fiction. Uh, she was nice, she was beautiful, the specter, but mostly we have that horrible, threatening, dangerous ghost which appear in gothic fiction. And as you have seen, we have different types and roles of specters in gothic fiction. Let's go to the next one, which is monsters. Monsters are characterized by gross materiality. It does not signify the return of the dead but a creature defined by its perverse physicality. Uh, monsters, uh, they have their symbolic meaning. They try to represent the degeneration of the society and how people are forgetting their human nature, their nice angelic nature that God has gifted them with. They are becoming monsters, they are becoming dangerous, they are becoming uh, against their nature, against their human humanity, and against the love that we expect from this creature. That's why they are becoming monsters, and it's a very, you know, uh, critical concept. It is a social criticism, this concept, monsters, that the, the society is just turning against itself, turning against its, its, its nature, nature of love and respect for others. That's why we have this concept, this monster, very, uh, it's a motif in literary, uh, in, in gothic fiction and gothic genre. And uh, they, they do not signify the return of the dead. It, it's not about the return of the dead from, from death, but they try to signify the preserve physicality and morality and how people are losing their morality, how people are just uh, forgetting themselves and their nature and they are turning into something very dangerous and unknown. Uh, I found one of the best examples. Another, another uh, gothic body is the zombies. Zombies are physical bodies returned from death. They lack supernatural power logic or any clear plan uh, zombies they are just normal people who are dead but they come into life after they are dead they open their graves and just erupt from the from their graves they do not have any logic or clear plan but they have some supernatural power uh, they are not so clever they are not so intelligent that's why they lack any clear plan they are uh, logically very very p poor and very weak that's why they can be easily overcome and they can be easily 
killed again. And uh, uh, zombies represent those tube of people who do not have any, any plan. Again, this is another uh, social criticism of those people, of the masses, who just follow the orders of their bosses or their leaders without having the ability of thinking. They are the zombies, they are uh, the people, the masses who just follow orders without any clear plan, without any clear logic. They just fo follow orders and we have zombies everywhere today. They are living among us. And I think this idea of the zombies is borrowed from the Bible because uh, in the Bible of the Matthew, uh, when Jesus was crucified, uh, we see that there is a very dark storm and uh, the Bible mentions that uh, that the, the dead bodies of saints, of uh, patriarchs, they come into the cities. We see, the Bible mentions that we see the dead people coming into life, into life and walking in the streets of the city of Jerusalem. Um, you can go and read those verses in the New Testament in the Bible of Matthew. So I believe this idea of the zombies is borrowed from that scene in the Bible.
so we've watched this tense scene from World War Z and how they react to those zombies that which have attacked Jerusalem. Uh, and and one of the natures of zombies is that when they bite, bite someone, uh, that guy, the other who is bitten by the zombie, turns into a zombie again. Again, this is a reference to how ideologies move among people. They just move on by very small words or just very simple sentences and people turn into the followers of that ideology of that those people in power so th this is a reference or an example of how the masses are uh, subjectivized by their authorities so let's move on to the next concept which is the vampires they possess certain supernatural powers they are physical physical bodies that return from death to have their different bourgeoisie lifestyle so the vampires are also they come back from death uh, but they are different from the zombies in that they are more like like from the higher class they are the bourgeoisie of, of uh, have that bourgeoisie lifestyle and they are more sophisticated, more educated, they are from the higher class of the society and according to a philosopher, he believes that uh, uh, this differences, these differences between zombies and vampires represent the differences among social classes the zombies are the working class and the vampires are the uh, capitalist or the bourgeoisie and uh, he believes that this distinction between these two uh, gothic bodies is a very classist uh, classist ideology so vampires also they tr like to drink blood they try to be isolated from the masses they live in their own caves and isolated life they have their own lifestyle they are mostly they are very beautiful they are handsome they are very sophisticated and educated and maybe philosophers okay as we read in many novels and watch in many movies as an example uh, again uh, he brought this borrowed this example from dark shadows by johnny depp and how he turns from death into life again with his uh, hilarious acting his funny acting so let's enjoy this clip from johnny depp That that touch was very funny, uh, Mephistopheles, because because he has returned from death uh, for over three centuries. Okay, he has been dead for three centuries, and he used to have his own uh, that Renaissance 16th century or 17th century lifestyle. Now he thought that Macdonald is another type of Mephistopheles because. Uh, these biblical references, these supernatural references were so uh, dominant at that time. Mephistopheles, Lucifer, angel, God, 
Archangel. These concepts were very dominant at that time in the 17th century from the time, from the age in from which uh, Jayatep has returned. So let's move to the last Gothic body, which is Abjection. Abjection is an experience of abject, abjection is uh, arises, sorry, this is a grammatical mistake or spelling mistake, arises when an individual confronts an object, uh, an object that disturbs identity, system, order. It does not respect borders, positions, and rules. So abjection is, is like uh, when somebody uh, arises and who disturbs the identity, system, or order. He, that abjection does not respect the orders, the norms, the traditions, the laws of the society. Uh, th there is no respect of borders. Okay, he is free to do anything. That's abjection. That's a gothic body. Is free to do what he desires, what he likes to do. Again, uh, this is a social criticism of the people who do not follow orders and do not respect the borders of people. Uh, another best example, beautiful example, is uh, the Pet Cemetery. It is a novel written by uh, Stephen King in 1992, I think, and uh, this film was 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 done in 2019. It's amazing. I really love this one. Maybe one of the best gothic movies I've ever seen. Uh, I hope you all watch the full version of this movie, and let's watch what does it mean to be an abject, to be an abject body. What does it mean, abjection? Here, the girl, the little girl, the daughter of this guy, returns from death because uh, he buried her in a cemetery. Uh, that cemetery has some magical power which gives life to all those people who are buried in that cemetery. So, because he loved his daughter, he buried his daughter uh, in that cemetery to give life to her. And now, let's see what happens when she comes back. Daddy. Where am I? Oh, my, my little girl. Uh, <laughs> now she is still dead. She doesn't have that lively, energetic life that she used to have during her life. She is dead now. This is the meaning of abjection. Not like that. There was a trap. Inside. 
nothing you do. Yeah, Close your eyes. Okay, that, that was amazing. You just imagine that you are hugging a dead body and uh, while you are asleep. While you're sleeping, you just sleep next to a dead body. Then that's that's amazing. Hey, uh, Stephen King is a crazy writer. H how come he writes this powerfully and this greatly? I really admire his novels. I really admire his works. Thank you, Stephen King, for these amazing novels and movies that you have contributed to so uh thank you very much for today these were the most important and recurrent gothic bodies which appear in gothic fiction and gothic movies so for the coming lectures we will uh, deal with other theories that concern gothic fiction stay tuned and thank you very much